You ever look for the remote control, you can't find it, so you just decide, ah, looks like I'm not watching TV. <laughs> not gonna take two steps and turn it on myself. I'll go to the gym if I'm gonna work out. <laughs> Forget that. You ever have the TV on and you can't find the remote? Gotta watch that one channel? <laughs> Feel like you're in prison. I, I gotta watch this. Feel like I'm reading this work. I watch a lot of TV, I drink a lot of coffee too. But you know what's really addictive? Heroin. <laughs> I'm gonna grab you by the horn. What horn? My favorite channel is the Lifetime channel because Lifetime is television for women. <laughs> Lifetime, television for women. Yet for some reason, there's always a woman getting beaten on that network. <laughs> In a Lifetime original, Meredith Baxter Burney gets beaten with a rod. In a Lifetime original, rod. I was watching Animal Planet. Do you know that the male seahorse has the baby? And I was thinking, why don't they just call that the female seahorse? You know it's just some stubborn scientist, you know? Yeah, that one there is male seahorse. Oh, Bill, that one's having a baby. Male has the baby. You're fired. <laughs> but if you do nothing for too long, the most menial task is exhausting. You're like, I actually have to point the remote control? What is this, the 50s? Can't I just look at the TV and it'll know what I want to watch? You ever been watching TV for a couple hours and you suddenly lose the remote? I haven't even gotten up. <laughs> I don't remember throwing it. <laughs> well, looks like I'm watching this infomercial. <laughs> we all have the same attitude on infomercials. <laughs> Who's watching this crap? And then three minutes later, that's a good point. <laughs> Maybe I need a knife that can cut a penny. <laughs> Too bad my phone's on the other side of the room. I need a remote for my phone. <laughs> I think you know you're addicted to TV when the battery in the remote goes out and you replace it with the battery from the smoke alarm. <laughs> hey, I only smoke in bed anyway. <laughs> You'll wake me up remote, won't ya? <laughs> Remember when the remote was three buttons? Now it's like an honors math calculator. <laughs> Just trying to find VH1, not split an atom. I watch too much. I don't understand the people who don't like TV. I just prefer reading. <laughs> Have you watched television? <laughs> it's way better. There's pictures, there's sound, and most importantly, no reading. <laughs> I don't even know what people did before television. That must have been horrible. Even in those old time photos of people gathered around the radio, they're always looking at the radio like, I can't wait till they invent the TV. <laughs> This era sucks! Why were they even looking at the radio? Were they that bored? Maybe it'll turn into a TV. Those workout clothes are comfortable to watch television in, huh? Thanks to Nike, I think I'll finish this Law & Order marathon. Some hotels, they kind of push that porn on you. you know? Some poor guy just turns on the TV, they're like, after hours. It's 9 a.m., I'm on my way to a business meeting. After hours. I'm here for my grandma's memorial. After hours. Well, maybe after the memorial, I don't. Thank you to everyone who watched the Jim Gaffigan show, by the way, I appreciate it. And if you didn't watch, that just means you're a jerk. <laughs> but no, but thank you if you did watch, because there are so many television shows and episodes of television shows we could and should be watching. It's amazing any of us are here right now. <laughs> it's kind of overwhelming, DVR, on demand. Sometimes I open my Netflix, I'm like, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> I'm not even gonna make a dent here. And I know there's pressure. We all feel it, because we've developed excuses for our friends, like we're dealing with debt collectors. 
You watch Game of Thrones? I'm a little behind. <laughs> uh, give me a week. My wife had a dumb baby. <laughs> and it's never ending. You finish that show, now you have to watch this show, and then you have, no, now I need to learn how to read again. <laughs> I need to sound out some words and see if I can read. Have you read a physical book lately? Not on a tablet or a laptop, an actual book. You feel like you're Abe Lincoln. <laughs> oh, it's made of wood. Hope it doesn't catch on fire. <laughs> when does this have to be back at the museum? Because we're all binge watching. I remember when they first introduced the idea of binge watching, I was like, how pathetic. I'm just gonna watch an episode or two. I haven't showered in a week. <laughs> I'm a grandfather. I missed my own funeral. I binge watch shows I don't even like. This is pretty bad, I guess I watched five more episodes. <laughs> I watched every episode of True Blood and I'm not even gay. <laughs> I know some of you are like, Jim, watching True Blood doesn't mean you're gay. That's because you're gay. <laughs> it's the number one cause of gayness. My friends don't understand. They're like, when do you watch? You have five kids. I ignore them. <laughs> I can't go to that recital. I'm re-watching West Wing. <laughs> it's embarrassing how I consume television. There are nights when I've told myself, all right, one more season. <laughs> I'm going to bed. I mean, come on. It's hard to stop. You see the ending. You want the accomplishment, right? Oh, you ran a 10K? Yeah, I finished Mad Men. <laughs> I did it. I'm a little sore, but I did it. I'm a television athlete. I'm a telathlete. <laughs> it's strange when you get done watching an entire series. You don't know what to do with yourself. You're like, I haven't been this lost since the ending of Lost. <laughs> Should I go to a bar? I don't know if I remember how to talk to people. And starting a new show, that's kind of like a blind date, right? You know, well, my friend said you were great. <laughs> I'm free tonight, so. I think I'm ready to put myself back out there. Because we have relationships with these television shows. You ever break up with a show? You watch a bunch of episodes and you're like, it's over. <laughs> I don't even know you anymore. I gave up the best nights of my life. Netflix, they won't let you forget your mistakes. They keep them in your queue. <laughs> Remember this relationship? I was drunk. <laughs> I was on the rebound. They'll make suggestions. Since you enjoy True Blood, here's some other gay shows. <laughs> Maybe I would like the L word. I don't know. <laughs> Netflix has definitely made watching television with commercials kind of painful. It takes forever. You're like, what am I, growing my own food here? <laughs> All right, Geico, we get it! <laughs> and it's not just the length or the number of the commercials. It's what the commercials say about the typical viewer of the show you're watching. <laughs> Catheter? <laughs> Why would... Reverse mortgage? <laughs> back pain? <gasps> I do have back pain. You know me so well, television show. I watch a lot of cable news because I enjoy being depressed. <laughs> That's the only reason to watch. After five minutes, they just repeat the same stories. Remember that horrible thing? Wait till we show you 20 more times. <laughs> you won't be able to sleep. I think it's interesting how all the cable newscasters are very attractive. They're very attractive and they're dressed up. I don't know why. You know, you're talking about a hurricane What's with the evening gown? <laughs> but we all kind of watch like, thanks for showing some leg. <laughs> Cable newscasters are so attractive, when they interview a regular person, it's visually distracting. <laughs> They're like, is that a bad guy? <laughs> or a victim? I know they're a loser in this scenario, but... <laughs> but the newscasters, those are our town gossips. Right? And that's what newscasters are. They're town gossips. They're like, you're not going to believe what happened to this person you've never met before. <laughs> Isn't that sad? By the way, there's some weird stuff going on in England. I have a friend, John, over there. John, why don't you tell him about it? 
thanks, John. Isn't that horrible? By the way, it's gonna rain tomorrow. I'm like 99% positive it's gonna rain, and that's sad. Most of my friends under the age of 30 don't even have cable. And I'm like, where do you send your $500 a month? <laughs> it's getting to be embarrassing to have cable, right? You have cable? Ha, I'm getting rid of it. <laughs> you know, when, when I die. Technology's moving so fast. And there's times when you feel like you're on top of it. And then there's times when you feel like that friend with the flip phone. <laughs> we all have the friend or relative with a flip phone. You're like, where'd you get that? <laughs> Do you use that to call the past? <laughs> what character were you on Breaking Bad? But I like being married to a strong woman. I do, and I'm sure there are other men in the audience looking at their wives like, honey, do you want me to clap, or? <laughs> you know, do you like what he's saying? Because I'm on your side. I just don't want to talk about it later on. I do like being married to a strong, decisive woman. But you know what? I'm in charge of the remote control. That's where I draw the line, all right? I'm in charge of the remote because I'm the man, all right? I mean, she picks all the shows we watch, but I get to hold the remote. <laughs> because that's the kind of puppet dictator that I am. <laughs> Being in charge of the remote control is a no-win situation anyway. The person you're watching with is never satisfied. They're like, turn it up, I can't hear it. And then you turn it up and the commercial comes on. Turn it down, what's wrong with your hearing? <laughs> I'm always in trouble when we watch television. Stop crinkling that back. <laughs> Once I got in trouble for sneezing, why would you do that? I think it's involuntary. Well, now I didn't hear what that guy said. All right, I'll rewind it. Oh, now it's starting the whole episode over. Here, you should be in charge of the remote. I'm gonna go back to hiding in the bathroom. I do sometimes lie up here. I'm not proud of it. But sometimes we all have to lie. Like, even when I tell my children not to lie, I'm kind of lying to them. <laughs> Some people are like, you should never lie to a child. And those people don't have kids. Because <laughs> when you have kids, you lie to them all the time. You're like, you wouldn't like this ice cream. It's very spicy. <laughs> I'd share, but Santa said I can't. Now, why don't you go to sleep so I can wrestle your mom? I'm not encouraging lying. I'm just saying there are times when you need to, right? Like if you're late to meet someone and you see that they're already angry and you don't have an excuse, you, you have to lie. Because if you told that person the truth, they would never speak to you again. You're gonna be like, hey, I gotta come clean. I just couldn't motivate to get going. I mean, eventually I could. What I'm trying to say is I don't value your time. I've identified there are two times when it's socially acceptable to lie. To spare someone's feelings, it's okay to lie. It's also okay to lie to cover up a murder. <laughs> Allow me to explain. When we discover someone's a murderer, we also learn they've done some fibbing, but we tend to focus on the murder part. You never hear, I'm angry he killed that guy, but frankly, I'm more upset about the lying. It's the dishonesty that bothers me. Some trust has been broken. Speaking of lying murderers, I watch a lot of Dateline. I don't want to brag. Some other winners out there. If you're unfamiliar or you have a life, Dateline is a news magazine show, like 60 Minutes, but at one point, Dateline just went all in on murder. And it's usually spousal murder. Like, if you watch Dateline, it appears most marriages end in murder. <laughs> Every episode starts the same. They had the perfect marriage. <laughs> but you know someone's getting killed. <laughs> a husband, a wife, sometimes they'll get someone else to kill their spouse, which seems impersonal. <laughs> it's like, you took a vow, do it yourself. 
Anyway, I was watching this one episode of Dateline about this guy who murdered his wife. It was gruesome. I was watching with my wife on our anniversary. <laughs> my wife didn't care. I mean, she wasn't thrilled I was taking notes. <laughs> what are you writing down? This guy's just sloppy. It's like he's trying to get caught. If anything, this guy's plan was foolproof. What he did on his anniversary is he threw a party for him and his wife, and they invited all their friends so that they could see how happy they were. And then the next morning, he took his wife fishing. He rented a boat, he brought a cooler, some tackle, three concrete blocks, and a tarp. <laughs> you know, for fishing. <laughs> and he would have gotten away with the whole thing. But three months after his wife disappeared at sea, he got engaged to a stripper. <laughs> which is kind of suspicious. <laughs> and to celebrate their engagement, they dropped acid, as tradition would have. <laughs> and while tripping on acid, he admitted the whole thing to his fiance. And she turned him in because she didn't appreciate the dishonesty. <laughs> And as the episode ended, all I could think is, I'm a terrific husband. <laughs> I've never even thought of murdering my wife. Well, I've never made plans to murder my wife. Well, I don't own concrete blocks. I can see some of you are like, Jim, I don't like the murder jokes. I don't like them. But wouldn't it be great if in a week you learned I was a murderer? Because then you could brag, you could be like, oh my gosh, we were at a, the taping for a special. And he had all these jokes on murder. Were they good? Not really, no. He was better at murder than comedy. If you know me, I would do anything for my wife. And that's part of my alibi. No. I... I would do anything for my wife, but I'm not a romantic person. I wish I was. There are moments when it's glaringly obvious. I get to travel so much doing stand-up. I did a show in Cologne, Germany, and before the show, I was walking over this bridge that went across the Rhine River, and as I walked across, I noticed there were hundreds of locks, hundreds of locks on this bridge, and each of the locks had two initials, and it was apparent that couples had put their lock there as a symbol of their relationship. And I looked at it and I thought, that's perfect. Nothing captures love like a rusty padlock. <laughs> dangling over filthy water. <laughs> but it was visually spectacular, and it affected me. I'm almost embarrassed to admit this. I found myself spending the next hour just kind of looking for a hardware store in this town I had never been in. I spent an hour looking, and eventually I found a hardware store. I went in, and I bought a bolt cutter. <laughs> And I went back, and I started snipping off the locks. <laughs> and with each snip, I said, it's over. <laughs> over. You're free. And people were giving me dirty looks. <laughs> now, what, what a grand romantic gesture, right? But you know the first guy who did that was a psycho. <laughs> like, his partner or girlfriend was not a willing participant. He was like, you're probably wondering I, why I brought you to the middle of the bridge in March. I'm going to do something you'll never, ever forget. She was like, oh my gosh, are you going to jump? No, I want to put this lock here. I'll put it here as a symbol of our love. And soon others will do it. And the bridge will be covered with locks. But you'll know that the first lock was a symbol of our love. And the woman was like, is that my bike lock? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Jim, that's a sad story. Hi, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you want. If you want to see more stand-up, I have more stand-up, or if you want to see an original show like Let's Get Cooking or The Mike and Pat Show, 
that's available on my channel, but also just know that I'll be posting a new video every day during this pandemic or until the world ends. Please hit subscribe and turn on your alert or notification button.